this is my story about uh, my experience with sexual abuse. Um, the exact age that I recall it happening is, is, is hard to pinpoint, but as best as I can kind of narrow it down in my mind, it's about 11 or 10-ish years old. Uh, and I recall it being back when I was uh, living in Langley. We lived in a, a complex and I had a friend and I would routinely stay over at his house. It wasn't really an issue. And at some point in uh, his time living there, they had a roommate. And I remember going over to his house. It was, uh, again, not too abnormal to sleep over. And I was, I remember being told that I would sleep in, um, and again, I didn't think anything of it. I thought, okay, I probably even thought, you know, that it's just going to be me. Maybe he's sleeping on the couch. Like it didn't cross my mind that anything odd would be happening. Um, and I even went to bed by myself, uh, later that night. So I woke up and, um, I wasn't alone and moving kind of forward in that, uh, you know, it first off started with just kind of touching. Um, and I don't think it was known that I was awake at that point. Uh, I do recall it's like just silently sobbing and crying and, and wishing and hoping that someone would come up the stairs and stop what was going on. Uh, oddly, I, I remember the door being open and I could see the lights in the TV like those. That's something that sticks with me. And I just thought, you know, like if, if someone knew what was going on, could, like, could they stop it? And um, eventually it, it turned into more interactions uh, and, and more touching. Um, eventually, after that, I kind of I remember rolling back onto my side and and while still being touched, crying myself to sleep. Uh, when I woke up in the morning, I was alone again, and I don't particularly recall even like thinking about it or, or having the inclination that I need to tell someone about what just happened. Uh, and after that, as far as I can look back, I don't have my, I don't have memories of myself thinking about it. It's not until I'm about 16 years old and in my room uh, where the memory comes back. And I just remember a sinking feeling thinking, you know, like, great. Now this is something I have to deal with. I did open up to it. A, bit to my best friend at the time. Uh, this would have been a little while after the, the memory coming back. Um, he was uh, two years younger than me, so he really didn't have the capacity to help me with it and, and kind of coming forward about that. But just getting it out, I think, was a good first step. Um, and then as, as I kind of got older, the the feeling of anxiousness kind of knowing that I would have to deal with this and wanting to deal with it and seeing more of the effects that this this had on me uh, emotionally uh, with, with my anger with sadness um, and not truly understanding how it was playing into relationships that I had mostly kind of with family or friends. I didn't really get engaged in too many romantic relationships. Uh, I believe largely because of just the fear of int intimacy. At that point, it was then at about, it would have been 2016, I believe. Uh, I, I started work at a pet store in Surrey and I, and I had a co-worker, an older woman and her and I worked quite a bit, built a bit of a rapport and she, she was very supportive. And while I didn't directly open up about what I had experienced, uh, just her support and kind of encouraging me to seek 
help for my obvious kind of challenges and struggles that I was uh, I was showing, just kind of you know, feeling down and maybe even depressed at times, uh, kind of motivated me to take the next step. And so it was uh, actually Valentine's Day of that year, or 27, about that time. But I just remember Valentine's Day, I'm going to show myself some self-love and I'm going to, I don't know, I just decided I'm going to go walk to the place that the complex that this happened and see what I can remember because I, I want to move forward with this and, and gather my thoughts. So when I do move forward with the police, I can kind of at least make some sense of it. Um, and it just kind of snowballed that day. I went to that place and I walked around and I, I still felt confident in kind of my decision to be there. And then I thought, well, why don't I just go to the police station and ask, what does someone do in this situation? And when I got there, they asked, um, you know, would you like to speak to an officer? And I guess just the momentum of that day and then everything behind me uh, said yes. So I, I waited in that lobby. I didn't tell anyone I was doing this. So I was alone. And I guess just speaking on that experience, I don't, regret doing it that way um but it definitely would have been nice to, to have some support there and i don't hold that against anyone because like i said i chose to kind of do that and, and not say to, to anyone that that was my intention anyways i talked to uh the officer there uh, really great officer um I, I can't speak highly enough of, of how he treated me with respect, with dignity, how he heard my story, how um, he made me feel heard and um, seen. And I think that re really helped me feel comfortable in, in retelling the story in detail to him. And once I left, you know, I've never thought back onto the feeling of what it was like walking out of there until this moment. But I guess there was a sense of definitely relief. Um, and I think kind of looking back, the fear of, of just that whole day and, and, you know, moving forward with that decision um, that, that weight off the shoulder of that first step was, was a, a very important moment in my healing and, and recovery from that. Uh, I believe afterwards, I got in contact with victim's assistance. It might've been that same day, but Regardless, they um, directed me towards an organization called, uh, the, I may have this slightly off, but the BC Society of Male Sexual Abuse, or Survivors of Sexual Abuse, um, where I would proceed to do almost, with some gaps, but two years worth of counseling there. And my counselor was an, an extraordinary gentleman. He, he really helped me move through a lot of what I was kind of hurting with. Um, I think his approach and his compassion really showed in, in <clears throat> um, in the way he believed in me. I think, I think that was an important aspect of, of healing too, having someone. Uh, and I guess that's kind of what I felt with the officer too, is he believed me. Um, but yeah, we worked really hard. I, I went, aside from a few pauses every week, um, we worked very diligently at identifying, you know, what emotions I was really going through and feeling, and that's something that until that point in my life, I had 
very little awareness of. It was, I could feel sadness and I could feel anger and joy, but to say that I felt, you know, um, unseen or uh, abandoned even uh, was not something I could have discovered quite on my own at that point. Um, and then, yeah, we, we parted ways when, when he went back to school. Um, and I, I do have to thank and send some appreciation to victims assistance. They were extremely generous in allowing me to have support in financing this counseling. I couldn't have got to that place without them. That's, that's a huge, a huge, um, piece for me. And then something I, I don't know who got to decide, uh, to approve my, my funding over and over again, but if I could say thank you to that person, I would, or people. Uh, and then just kind of moving on and it's been about two years almost since I finished the counseling then, uh, in that time I, I started a relationship. I have a kid son um, I'm now trying to you know, speak out and, and give back to the community that helped and supported me and, and also to other men that could be going through this and even other kids that are struggling to come forward or talk about what they experienced um, And then looking back on kind of, you know, some of uh, some of the difficulties surrounding my experience. Unfortunately, I didn't grow up in a house that felt particularly emotionally safe. And so I think that contributed to some of the hesitation with coming forward. And if I if I would speak on that, I would say to any parents concerned about this happening to really facilitate and help foster a, a house where emotional safety is, is felt throughout the kids and the parents. And that would definitely be a step towards I, I would like to say, you know, having it's not happened, but obviously at this point, in the, the kind of narrative it has, but at least the kid can come forward and start to deal with it um, or address the issue and um, the healing can begin from it. Or if it's reoccurring, have it stop altogether. Um, I also, also when I look back, I think we we could do more to help men not no let me let me try that again. I think we could do more to encourage men to not feel like it's their fault. I was I struggled to say, but fortunate enough to to kind of have that nugget of of truth in there. I knew it wasn't my fault, but that didn't mean I didn't feel like it was. Uh, I tried not to hold myself to a, a standard of, well, I should have just got up or I could have stopped it. And, and I tried to look at it as, you know, I was, I was a little kid and, and this adult was, had a lot more power over me. And uh, that, that still was in there and, and made it difficult to to look at myself in a in a healthy way, you know, and I and I think something for me that stuck out too as I've looked back is looking for signs in your kid of kind of what may be going on. Uh, I recognize afterwards that you know there was a lot of poor self-image. I recall like not wanting to look in the mirrors afterwards just because I hated myself. And I thought I was ugly. And 
I remember anger becoming an issue at that point in my life and, and having outbursts. And I feel it's okay to use this quote. And I remember my mom saying once I told her that, uh, you know, she she worried about it with my sisters and didn't consider it as a possibility that it could have or would happen to me. And so as these anger outbursts would happen, I was looked at, or what I feel I was looked at as more of a kid with an anger problem rather than a kid that was hurt and didn't know how to, to talk about it or express it or at that point even remember why this was happening. So I think kind of maybe allowing a space to reframe just how we are looking at our kids and, and the reasons that they are acting the way they are will also be an important factor in helping determine you know, what, what truly could be going on for them. Um, just as of recently, more and more has come out as I've started to look at relationships with the people in my life and particularly my parents. And I don't want this kind of dynamic to happen to other families. And so what I'm kind of, what I kind of mean by that is there's a lot of resentment I have towards them from that time, looking back because of not feeling seen because of feeling kind of emotionally abandoned, uh, because of feeling unloved. And while I, I don't think that they didn't love me, it just as a kid that was being told I was something I wasn't and not being, like I said, seen kind of as this hurt little kid, um, I think that started to foster a belief that I wasn't loved and I think you know, I, I know I don't want that to to build in, in other kids and have them grow and resent their, their parents and and have dynamics and families where people don't talk or there's anger and separation. I think uh, helping raise awareness and, and giving back in this way is, is the least that I can do and hoping that this message will uh, be a, a, a voice for change for that. As a man with the experience of being sexually abused, even though I never had a direct experience of someone expressing disbelief towards my experience, there was still what felt like this intrinsic idea that I wouldn't be believed. Um, and I, I don't know the exact factors for that, you know, but that is something that would have been helpful in my experience is also kind of letting, letting men know that, um, you know, it, we, you will be believed. Um, and I think that might be especially important and true for kids. Um, and while maybe not something particularly at fault, I, I can say like it, it wasn't helpful to have that kind of internal dialogue going on. And maybe um, having men and, and boys be addressed in a, in a way that helps establish that, uh, you know, sexual abuse is something that does happen to us and um, we're, we're not here to, to judge them.